morning, plants. Welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, the weather report. 22 to 32 today. And um, I'm in the little shipping container. I've got the air conditioner buzzing in the background. <laughs> oh, it been bloody hot. I've been up the back doing um, Maltese's gearbox. I've been, um, I've been trying to get him in to do the box over the last few weekends. And oh, he's going, here going, there. And this last weekend, I said, you're coming on, eh? Oh, the weekend before, no, he was doing some work. And, and then this last weekend, I said, how are we going for that gearbox? Oh no, he's off helping a mate do some stuff and get some tractors ready for some shows and that, so. Anyway, I'm, I'm starting to bring Dad's stuff in. We've had to put Dad into care. And um, Mum's rattling me chain about getting the, um, getting the back veranda and his tools and all that out of town and brought out here into his shipping container. But um, yeah, look, it's a big job. Yeah, and I'm running out of room. <laughs> I'm trying to dance around this bloody gearbox. So anyway, today I've got the gearbox finished and um, I've messaged Paul to come and pick it up. And we still haven't done the clutch and I was messaging him earlier. He reckons, oh, next weekend he'll do the clutch. So we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can't do it. I'm just running out of time. And um, he's got a show coming up April. It's the beginning of March now. And April is a show coming up then. Um, I've got to get my big engine down and give it a run and all that between now and the second weekend in April. So we'll see. Um, April's a local show to Giggy. Um, it's one of Paul's club runs, but I don't know, I'm just running out of time. If I've, I've been putting a lot of time into everything except my projects. And um, and so with that, I have another thing on my bonnet. Um, but I've been... <laughs> Malteser, he bought a heart par 2850, so he... He rattled me chain the other day and he said, oh, you know, any chance you can get this car be done? And he was sort of looking to get it for the end of the, for Tagigi, as I understand. But anyway, he's probably got a bit cold on that, I don't know. And, um, but anyway, I've, uh, I've put every evening this last week, except for one, into it. And it's had a heap of water. Um, it's had a heap of water sitting in it. And the bottom half of this Venturi, where the butterfly goes here, the, the butterfly shaft goes in there. Oh shit. And the bottom half is just pitted to buggery with rust. So I've actually made a new butterfly shaft and I've gone through the process of um, I've gone through the process of machining a shaft down to fit in there and then cutting the venturi across. Um, oh sorry, cutting it across on the same angle as the old butterfly to try and get it the exact right shape. And look, we, we're pretty well bang on with that. Um, that's, that's the old butterfly. And when I, when I line it all up there, we're, we're about spot on, 1.6 inches. So, so I've got a couple of butterflies cut and this is how many it took me. <laughs> this is how many it took me to, to get one the right thickness, around 76 thou, cutting them off in the bandsaw. So, oh bloody thing. I'm sitting in here having a beer. We're having a we went to the pub yesterday, me and the missus, and um and I often drink coronas, but yesterday they were fifty-five bucks a box or something, mother. I haven't had one of these mills chilled for oh, look, a few years now. And, I said, bugger it, they're only 39 bucks, let's try them. So we, um, we had a look and we found some two years old as well, a six pack of that. So we grabbed a six pack of that and a, a box of uh, Miller's Chilled and yeah, life's pretty good, so cheers. I should have had a box of them with me up the back today, shit it was off. Anyway, so I've, I've got the, a new butterfly shaft made in the... Um, in the, what do you call it, um, spin indexer, 5C call it spin indexer. I've got it set up in that and I've got the, I've got it cut and I've got a butterfly sitting in there but I hadn't had a chance to go and bead blast everything until this morning and, and the top half of the carb is good. You know, I don't know if I can actually get to you to, yeah look at the pitting there. So there's no way that carby's going to run well. 
when you look at the other side and the side that hasn't got pity and you can just see a slight little wear mark there now that pitting it's not like a Fergie carby where you have a heap of little jets and that in it um, up the top end here the butterfly will sit right up along this edge so the butterfly will come come from this pivot right up to that top edge and back again so I'm wondering and, um, I'm wondering whether I should um, re-sleeve the whole thing like bore it out um, and re-sleeve it back to size or when the tractor is running and the butterfly is open it's not going to matter a toss it's, um, it's only if you're sitting it there just idling away it might be it may, it may not be too bad once you've got the mixture set um, it's okay this is a very primitive carby it's an old Schiebler um, TX320 and look it, it consists of a main jet a float and a butterfly and that's it and the original the original butterfly got all um, all rusted out probably from sitting I haven't gone through that exercise yet yes look when you when you sit the butterfly down in here all the rusted edge right up to halfway that's been all soldered up um, You can see all the solder down the bottom there. And so that's what's happened. It's sat with water in it for years and the, and the old butterfly, she's toast. So it's had a real rough edge around there. So I don't know how far I want to go with it. Um, I've already put about seven hours into this bloody thing and um, it takes a long time. Um, so whether, whether I bore it out, say, an eighth of an inch and put a whole new centre down it and then go or well, whether we whether we let it run or, or I don't really know um, but like I say we'll only affect it at an idle so if he's got it sitting parked somewhere um, that's when it'll affect it so I don't know about that we'll, we'll just see he's coming tomorrow to pick up his gearbox he still hasn't done the clutch I've been on to him about doing the clutch and um, oh he just can't find time so anyway he reckons next weekend so um, and that'll get his chamberlain going and I've, I've had to get it out of my hair just to fit dad's stuff in and get the um, get my engines down so I can put dad's stuff up out of the way up in the pallet racking so it's um we were going to try and get it done by Christmas and it's March now and we um, and there's still no signs so I just thought like, bugger it I went and done it so um you might notice in here um apart from the buzz in the background which is the aircon um the light's different in here now I started filming the other day on doing this butterfly shaft and all that and, and I was having a real trouble with the light over there but um, I've had the electrician come in and he started before Christmas to spark, he's a good bloke and um, anyway we, we've got our own main coming through the house now, um, it's still only 15 amp main but it's a 15 amp main coming in just to the shipping container here now, so just to my machine shop because before if I was um, working on the lathe and, and I had the aircon on the lathe on and the compressor kicked in outside, um, say a little two horse compressor, well I, I tripped a little overload and, and so now we should have enough power to do everything properly and, that we need to do. So um, we're with the proper main and also we were running off the same power point, we were running off I'm a 15 amp lead to the caravan to keep the battery charged and things like that. So now the caravan's got its own 15 amp main going to it. Um, the, the little hutchie here, she's got a 15 amp main going to it. And um, me VFD up the back there, that's fine. Um, I, I, <laughs> I hooked it up without telling him. And I said, look, well, I've done, you better come and have a look. And he said, oh, that's all right. <laughs> I said, that's okay, yeah. It's all, um, it's all conduited up and all that sort of thing. So that was good too. Um, I'm, I'm halfway through the shipping container here at the moment. You can see that's the mill, the control panel for the mill. Can you see the tail? That's the tail stock of the lathe just here. This is my little D-bit grinder. And um, I'm halfway down. I forgot the tripod. <laughs> the tripod's up the back and I've got a little mount on the... Um, 
on the wall here for filming down onto the milling machine. There's another one over here that I filmed down onto the lathe with. I've got a bit of work to do with them yet. I, um, I want to make a few more brackets for them. But So yeah, for the bugger it, I'll just put it up on the wall at the end there. I'll sit halfway and have a chat. Um, you can see all the toolboxes and all in the background. And, and um, But yeah, just something a bit different today. And um, with the new lights, um, the other day looking at the mill trying to um, video down at the mill I had the I had the trusty Makita torch here and I had it shining over there onto the job to try and light it up enough for filming um, to get a good thing and, and sometimes a bit too bright I believe but um, I, I just did a quick run just to have a look with the new LEDs and, and what we've got there the normal beams you know your normal four foot fluoros but um, I've got double LEDs in there with a diffuser, so to give us a more even light. And uh, look over there, it's it's good now. The camera picks it up nice and light, so hopefully it's not too bright. And um, I mean, it'll be often it'll it'll be what we need. Um, the three jaw chuck on my lathe, my Heron and Forbes AL three three five. Whenever I do any heavy cuts in it, I could never get it to hold properly, and I'm never 100% happy with it. So, um, the little bit of money I get off YouTube, I've tucked away in a bank account, and I, I don't touch it unless I well, I bought a camera with it, and um, I, tr I try and keep it here for the YouTube channel if I can. And um, so, the other day I, I thought I'd have a look for a, um, a four jaw scroll chuck. And so, um, yeah, so, yeah, you just turn it. The same as a three jaw, but a four jaw. Um, not independent jaws. And um, anyway, I had a hunt around, and, and the lathe's got D1 4 um, cam lock at the back of it there. So I found a chuck, a four jaw scroll chuck, but um, I've had to buy, off here in Forbes, I've had to buy a backing plate. Um, the D1-4, and um, I haven't got the steel here to make it at the moment. I've, you know, I suppose I could, should have got Dave to cut me some, but I just haven't got it here. You know, I thought, oh, bugger it, I'll just buy a, buy a backing plate. So, anyway, talking to the people about the, the four-jaw chuck, and um, the four-jaw scroll chuck, and he said, oh, I've got a six-jaw here too. And I said, have ya? I said, I always wanted one of them. <laughs> so anyway, I bought both. Um, so there's 800 bucks down the tube, and um, so I've got a, a four jaw scroll chuck and a six jaw scroll chuck um, coming, and two backing plates. So um, we'll have to machine the backing plates up to get them to suit. Um, I have had one of the one of the cam um, cam locks where you turn it really tight on this lathe. So the other day I popped it out too, and I had a look, and I just. It had a burr from factory. You can just see where it's been rubbing on the thing. And look, I've had that for years, that lathe, and it's always been like that. So I've fixed that. Um, so yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the um, to the four jaw and the six jaw chuck. They're both 200 mil chucks, so they're nice beefy chucks. Um, and I also spoke to me Sparky about um, putting a variable frequency drive on this lathe, and. Um, we, we didn't put a lot of time into that. I'm, I'm thinking I've got the right motor, but if not, we'll put a new motor on too. We'll just see. But the variable frequency drive up the back's going well. Um, that run out, um, I haven't put any time into that yet. I've got a spare spindle I've just brought up here today. And actually, I found the two spare spindles I had. So um, I'm going to polish them up. I'm going to chuck them up in the four jaw here. And just it has a double row ball at the bottom and a single row at the top and I'm thinking for that to be bent I imagine some you know to, to bend them on a drill um, it's usually something goes around hits the tower and goes bang and um, and the, the thrust of that bends it <laughs> I remember with my little drill press up the back there one time I I, um, I, I put it I took the old key chuck off and I Went and bought an arbor and a buddy independent or a keyless chuck, and um, well, bugger me! About the second job, one of my apprentices, the job got away and went bloody bang and broke, the, <laughs> bent the arbor on me new thing. Oh, did I pissed off with him? But um, 
but that's how it bends anyway. So I've got two other spindles. So we're going to try and work the best of those. Um, that bearing noise you could hear in it last week. Um, I've, I've bought the one up one up here to pull apart. So I'll leave that one together until I get a, a, a new shaft and all that ready to rock and roll. And we'll put new bearings top and bottom and go from there. So that'll give us a nice drill there. My other little drill I think will sit in here. Um, I think I've got room for it. I've got a, I'm thinking of having a bit of a shuffle in my little hoochie here. Um, but look, we'll see. Um, I haven't got a lot of room here, but I am. I have worked out that I can do a couple of little changes and, and gain a little bit of space, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But um, look, I've, I've got a little bit of footage of doing the, um, the Hart Par Carby for you this week. So there's a bit of machining on the end here. Um, I will probably... You'll see some of it in the stews, but I'll probably, at the end of the job, I'll probably put it all together into one big video for um, for those that are interested in hard par tractors and things like that. But boy, there's a, there's a lot of work in it. I've, like I said, about seven hours so far, and I've got I've got the shaft made and um, bits tidied up, and um, I actually had to mill on the butterfly shaft here. Um, I had to mill the top off the screws because one was broken and one wasn't, and they were they'd been soldered in for some reason. And so I had to mill the top off and then drill through them. And um, then this piece here, this little right angle piece here, that um, is part of the butterfly, like the, the butterfly sat, how did it sit? It sat like that. It sat like that. And um, this bit here, this solid, it's, look, it'll be half by 9 16th or 5 8 probably. That's silver soldered onto the shaft. So, um, but anyway, we'll see. <laughs> See how we go, this is taking a lot, but it's not bad up here in the air con, so um, but stay with us, I'll just show a couple of the things, um, but I'll, I'll, I will repeat them in a separate video later on. So um, so that's it. Um, I was gonna show you the gearbox finished, but I come up the front here now, and I'm not going up the back, I'm having my bloody beer and a yarn. So <laughs> we'll see how we go. But um, I'm, I'm planning on this week, putting a lot of time in after work here into this carb and um, seeing if I can get that out for him. And uh, uh, what I'm having trouble with is I've got my 135 up the back I wanna work on, but while I've got other jobs around, I, I don't feel free to work on my own because I think, well, you know, you've told people you're gonna do this, so you need to do it. You know, not fuck about or root about. <laughs> and, um, you need to do it. But what's happening is my jobs are getting further apart and um, further away. And I was gonna take my um, 135 to Tagigi, um, the local show there, but, um, it doesn't look like I'm going to have it done. So if it's not done, I just won't go to Tikigi. I'll just leave that. And um, that'll buy me a few days to actually do a bit of work while everyone's at the show. We'll see. We haven't made up our mind yet. But um, see what happens. Look, stay tuned. Thanks for dropping by. Um, I should have a little bit of machining to tack onto the end here for you. Well, this is the bowl on the car beyond the hard par. I've had to bead blast it all up and tidy it up. But what I didn't show is... I didn't have a cap here, and I made that the other day. Um, I single pointed that. I like mean, lovely grey nail polish. I've just been, <laughs> I've just been priming some plates for underneath a um, um, a Fergie tractor, and I had to get my finger in the road to hold it around the right way. So I've got a lovely grey fingernail. So anyway, but yeah, yeah, we didn't have a cap here. So this cap, I I single pointed a three quarter by. I think it was 18 or 19. It's U N E S. Or U N U N F S special thread. So So we made that nice little screw. I didn't film that bit. I don't know why I didn't, but anyway, lazy bastard, hey. Well yeah, look that screws in nicely. And that's where the needle and seat is. Then this this top housing goes on there and then this big fella goes on there and he's got a he should have like a sniffer valve and the sniffer valve is a just a valve with a spring that um, by the time the low pressure in the inlet manifold draws this open um, that gives it a chance to draw fuel up the main jet and the main jet's that fella there 
So we've cleaned all this up. We've had to give it a great big tidy up. Um, it had water and um, the brass castings and all that had a green, um, green coppery looking sludge in the bottom of them. So the um, we've got a few bits and pieces here. But anyway, we'll see how we go with all that. That's a big job. And um, yeah, we'll work away and see if we can get this tractor going properly. Well, this is me mate's Carby off his Rumley 2850. And the other evening I made a little cap for it. Now, we have to replace this butterfly here and the butterfly shaft. Now, the, if you have a look here, we have one screw there that's had a piece of solder on it to hold it in. The head's broken off this one here. Then there's a line along here where I think that the butterfly has been eaten away from rust and they've soldered a little half on. So we have to get this butterfly out, get these screws drilled out, and <coughs> pardon me, and then get this shaft out. Then we'll probably make a new shaft, I would say. Um, there is a bit of movement, but if I zoom out here. You can see the mess on my mill, but you can see I've got this little little Chinese angle plate here that you can dial in, and I haven't used this a lot over the time, but this is, uh, that's ideal. I've got it clamped on, I've got a little bolt under the butterfly lever here to hold it shut so it doesn't want to move on it. Look at my light blinking. I'll have to go and change my light. Right, back again. Here's my little Makita battery light. So we'll sit it up so you can actually see down in the hole here. And look, all I'm going to do to start off with, I'll zoom in there a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. It's a little bit bright there probably, but um, I'm just going to flatten this off here with the, just a slot drill. I'm going to take the head off here and then we'll try and work the centre out and we'll just try and drill through. Now, we're not going to try and save the thread and pick the bolts out or anything like that. So we'll give this thing a bit of speed and we'll hit him up and see how we go. I'm just taking the handle off. in there we can actually see the heads of the bolts. I might have to if I take the light away is it better? No, it's certainly not. But we can now see that there's brass screws there. There's one here and one there. We can actually see the proper definition of where they are. So I think I'll put a centre drill in the um, in the collet here and We'll come down and we'll centre, try and centre pop as close to the centre there as we can, and then we'll just drill right through. Well, hopefully you can see what's going on, but I've, I've put a drill chuck in here because it's not as bulky as the ER40 type collet, 
and I think I'm in the centre, so I'll just have a bit of a touch and we'll see how we go. to be in the centre but look it really doesn't matter a lot we're not trying to keep any of it we're just trying to get it enough to strip it down to pull it apart got a bit of a thunderstorm going on in the background so we might hear some wild noises but I'll get a bigger drill now and we'll just try and drill all the threads out and just go straight through right I've just dropped a four and a half mil cobalt drill down in there so we might just sneak a bit of, bit of fluid on each one and see if we can come down nice and straight for them. Going a bit fast, and I burnt the ass out of that drill. Doesn't look too bad, but it might be hard there in there. drop a 5mm drill down there so I can deal with that other one.
very hard. You can't even think of it. So now, if I undo this little screw here that holds the butterfly shut, take that out of the way, I may be able to get the butterfly to slide out. Maybe, maybe not. There's a lot of solder in. Peel the shafts all peeled away. Yeah, can I get you to see that? It's a bit hard to you know, under here. Anyway, we've got to make it all new, so it doesn't really matter. Plate soldered, or a heap of solder on the top here, a heap of rust over the back here. So, with the rust there, I'm presuming uh, that's too much light length. There we go. 
I'm presuming that they've soldered it up to fix the rust or the rusty edge or something here. Anyway, we've got to make that. Now this shaft here, shaft. So we've got to make that. There should be up in this end I think a little uh, tapered pin there somewhere but I can't seem to see it just yet. But anyway we don't need to worry about that. We need to just get a piece of shaft like this one. We need to get a slitting saw and put a little hole in it and a couple of bolts and then we've got to make this hole. It'll take some doing, I reckon. Mm -hmm. 